Hi there, this is Danny. The channel's you and me living free. We're exploring Lake Havasu City today, and it is on the east side of Lake Havasu. So for anyone who's traveling across I-40, maybe you're going out to LA or somewhere out west and you're passing through Lake Havasu is only maybe an hour or so south of I-40 and it's a great little stopping place. Let me just say though I was here late November and this was like a paradise. If I were here in the high season which I don't know when that is but I would imagine maybe spring break or something like that or uh, maybe even in the winter with all the snowbirds coming down. If it were crowded I would not have liked it because I don't like crowds. Crowds. And so if there's a touristy place without the crowds, but with decent weather, like I'm in all day long, but if it's a touristy place with crowds or in high season, just count me out. I'm like a big nope for the whole thing. So Lake Havasu City has London Bridge, which was so much fun. And we'll see the actual bridge in a minute. There's a whole beach down here. There's a whole big like little stroll that you can do on the Bridgewater Channel Trail. There are more of these mini lighthouses that I was telling you about in the last video, which I just love. It's so charming and so cool to have them around. You can just tell this is a really, it's a very nice neighborhood and town. It's affluent. There's a lot of money here, you can tell, but it's very well maintained and it has a really good vibe, really good energy. Not sure what happened to the camera there. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, there's London Bridge and we're going to walk across it too. We're going all along this little trail here and it goes up one side of the channel, across the bridge and down the other side of the channel and then you can go up and back again. And I did this nice little stroll. There are no hikes while I'm in Lake Havasu, but there is this little stroll along the channel, which was so delightful. And there are ducks, there are people with their dogs, there are um, people playing pickleball and tennis and basketball. There's a whole like park area. It was, it was, it was delightful. And it had a neighborhood kind of charming feel to it, um, more than it had kind of a tourist destination feel to it. And maybe that's just because when I was there at this time of year, there weren't a lot of crowds and maybe most of the people who were there were locals. And so it did have that feel, but this place just felt really good. And you know what I'm talking about. When you, when you drive into a place, you can tell. Here's us walking across London Bridge. It had a great view. And along the channel there, along the water, there's not only restaurants and bars and shops, but there are you know, kayakers and there are pontoon boats and speed boats and everything just cruising along. The temperature was like in the mid 70s. This was gorgeous. Have I mentioned before how much I love being in the holiday season? Because I am a girl from the Midwest. To me, Thanksgiving and Christmas mean gray skies, cold weather, sometimes snow, sometimes freezing rain, sometimes um, piles of leaves that have fallen and need to be raked up. Like when I'm walking across this and it's late November, this brings me so much joy. This brings me a lot, a lot, a lot of joy. Look at that view. I am so grateful to be able to get out of the Midwest during the fall and looking forward to being out of it during this winter. That's one of the things I also have the sad, you know, seasonal um, affective disorder where gray days really do it to me even more than the cold weather cold weather makes me not want to get out but the gray days like take away my motivation they take away my excitement they they just make me feel uh, kind of heavy and kind of trapped and everything and um, to be out here in the sunshine next to this body of water and have it be late November and be wearing shorts and a t-shirt uh, mid-70s is to me like the ultimate privilege, the ultimate joy. Part of me thought that when I started to travel, 
I, since I would be able to get out of Kansas, when I would come back to Kansas, it would not feel as bad knowing that I only had to do it for a short period of time. But what I'm finding is that is actually not much the case. It's like when I do go back to Kansas, it almost seems like even worse than it was before and even more intolerable to my spirit and to my heart than it was before. Um, it's kind of an interesting thing. But that's, you know, part of why we do travel, right, is because travel's a game changer. It has changed my life. It's changed my perspective. It's changed what I think is possible. It, it's changed so much. And I don't ever want to go back to that old way of being. And maybe in some way, Kansas has kind of come to represent that kind of stagnant, that kind of stagnation, that kind of feeling trapped that I was for so long there. And now I'm, I'm really ready to break free from that. But I don't know what that looks like. And, you know, my kids are still here where they're, they're planted there. And so, and probably will be for the next one or two years anyway. So I don't know what all this means, but I'm just telling you <laughs> my experience. Because as you know, if you've been following me, I don't share stuff because I have it figured out. I share stuff because I'm trying to figure it out. Because I am just muddling my way through. <laughs> and, um, and, and, and maybe somehow and some way in this shared experience that has meaning and you you probably wouldn't be on my channel for very long if the some of that didn't resonate with you I know I'm not alone in feeling that and it looks like it's the end of another video I just want to thank you so much for being here and I am sending you love and I will catch you next time